Hey, everybody. Welcome to Connect and Cannabis, brought to you by Razzle. I'm, of course, your host, Brian Holler. Uh, I hope everybody's doing well out there today. Um, our special guest today is, of course, Joan Samuels from Hemp Staff. She'll be joining us. Uh, we'll be talking a lot about job seeking and how Hemp Staff can help people with regards to hiring, training, and maybe some other tips and tidbits about um, how you can proceed moving forward, even in our current environment. So, Joan, thank you so much for being here today. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. I'm, I'm great. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, having me on. Quite My often. pleasure, of course, as always. Um, so uh, let's talk about uh, Hemp Staff really quick uh, in general terms, kind of what is it, but what also, how did you, how did you find Hemp Staff and how did they find you? Uh, well, that's a great question. Thank you. Um, I, uh, well, I was born and raised in London, so I have this funny accent, <laughs> and I came to America about, about 15 years ago and started off really as a health ca- healthcare recruiter and then went into to technology and got laid off 19, uh, actually about 24 months ago actually, and uh, got this call from Hempstar um, and I was quite surprised <laughs> at the time because I'm not someone that's ever participated in, um, you know, hemp or cannabis, but, uh, you know, I thought hey, it might be something good to try and it's been a fantastic experience since I started in October of 2018, so I'm just on about 19 months now. But um, Hempstar, I was very interested in them because they are a training, they started off a training company six years ago, and they do offer both in-person and webinar training. So individuals that are trying to get into the cannabis field, uh, they offer a tremendous resource uh, because we do a three-tier training. We do uh, Cannabis 101, which I had to take because, as I said, I didn't have background. Mm-hmm. And then we do, um, you know, a Cannabis Operators uh, training. And then we do a, a, a more uh, advanced for someone who's been in the field for a while or even management uh, type training. Of course, unfortunately, because of COVID, um, all the trainings now are online, just obviously because of social distancing and staying safe at home. Sure. Uh, but we do sure. offer all these trainings, so it's a great resource. So we help people really get into the field, or people are in the field really to expand their, uh, you know, their their training and their skills. But on the other side, once you get the training, then we can help you get a job, really? and that's why. And that's where I fit in. I'm actually on the recruiting side. Um, we uh, really do everything all permanent placement. We don't do temporary or any types of, of gig placement. We specialize in permanent part-time, full-time, and contract work is where we specialize and can help everything from the entry level, just getting into, um, you know, just being a bud tender all the way up to CEOs. I play CEOs. I have. Very good. And so, you know, that's, I think anybody out there who's listening to this who's, you know, maybe has some shifts in their um, work uh, situation because of COVID or, um, or just maybe looking to make a change or to get into uh, cannabis. Um, Hemp staff is a, a very good resource for you in terms of um, training uh, and things of that nature. Um, how is, uh, how is business? You mentioned that you guys had to um, shift a little bit from basically in-person trainings to only going online. Um, has anything else been kind of uh, adjusted significantly due to COVID? Well, before I start that, I actually wanted to share a little success story with you, a very recent oh, please. success story that we had. Um, we had an individual, um, this guy Joe, who had done uh, one of our entry-level trainings in Chicago, where he lived five years ago. And he got uh, an entry level position as a bud tender uh, uh, right after the training and worked his way up to now being the actual uh, manager of the dispensary. And then we just hired him back last month to now be our trainer. <laughs> so I, that's just a, a, an amazing success story to show someone that came from zero all the way up to knowing nothing, to getting in, getting our training, um, working his way up to management and now coming back to train individuals like himself to get into the business. So I just thought it was a tremendous success story that I needed to, to share because I just thought that was, uh, was quite Absolutely. wonderful. Yeah, that's the but, but, of- yeah, but to answer your question, yeah, this is a great 
employees at the Control and Gaming with nothing and has grown through the ranks and now has come back to train the pe people. But when he was one of the students, he said, some of three, six, um, from student manager back to now training individuals. I thought that was quite, uh, quite yes, interesting to share. Absolutely. But yes, we had to change. But I haven't had to change my model. Our company is based in uh, Florida, and I live in I live in Los Angeles. So I've always been uh, a remote worker. So luckily for me, it hasn't been that much of a, a change. But with regards to how we deliver our training services, that's been our biggest change. Because you know, we, a lot of people do like to come to our classes. Um, we normally have classes of, of about of 75 to 100 individuals. We do a lot of our classes mostly on the East Coast and Midwest because we're based out of Key Largo, Florida. And we always found that people like to come into the classes because they want to network. They want to network, they want to, and that's what happened with Joe. He came in, did the class, networked, and, and got a job literally within a week of finishing the classes. So that is the biggest change for us is, you know, People now we have to do the webinar for obvious reasons. You can't have those big groups together, and we've changed all of our classes to webinar classes now. Whereas before we used to have a mix because a lot of individuals used to like to come and uh, do the classes in person. But with regards to delivering our services, um, I've always done the services uh, remotely. I've always worked remotely. Um, you can see I'm at home right now, staying safe <laughs> right. in Los Angeles. We've well, we're going on our fifth week now of um, a quarantine and having to stay home. I think uh, LA was one of the first ones to really enforce it, you know, where we have to stay home. So for me, um, luckily it wasn't a bigger change because I was always working a remotely, remotely anyway. But really the training services is, is, is our biggest, biggest change. Yep. Um, yeah, and I mean, that makes sense. Um, I guess on the other side, you can provide it more frequently, maybe. You can provide yes. um, kind of different things like that. So that helps for sure. And, and like you said, um, you know, when this came about, that's our trainer decided to come up with this new, our very entry level. We just had the two levels of classes. People working in dispensaries that really need to have more knowledge to sound and be more confident when they're serving um, individuals coming in and asking questions about different strains and stuff like that. And then a the management class. And then very recently, just a couple of weeks ago, we just added this entry level 101 for someone who just wants to just get you know, their, their foot into the business and need to add, at least add a certification to their resume saying that at least I've done a class and I have at least some knowledge. So you're right, we were able to expand our training. A lot of people are home, they're not doing much now, so they can actually do the training online and or, or I mean, we do weekends to try to, you know, not break into people's schedules just in case you are, because I work full time from home now. So sure. um, if you want, we do it on a Saturday so you can, do it with, with what you're already doing and uh, expand, you know, expand your skills and, and, make, and look for a new industry. Yes. Yeah, I think that's a very good um, thing to do, especially if you're in transition right now or you're just looking because of, you know, the nature of things. Um, you know, it's good to have resources out there. Um, you know, for instance, if you're looking for kind of resources in terms of building your own business and, um, and how to connect with other business owners in order to do that, Razzle's great for that. Um, however, if you're looking for individual jobs, uh, hip staff is great for that. Um, and the two together provide a lot of uh, information and a lot of well-rounded content. Speaking of which, I think that Cannabis 101 that you guys are, are, are rolling out, um, it's much needed. Uh, the, that is something that uh, a lot of folks that are just curious, and there's a lot of curiosity out there, um, is a really great uh, segue to kind of dip your toe in. You know, take a little training, get yourself kind of your bearing, see what's out there for you. And at the very least, it's good knowledge. At the very most, maybe you end up uh, making a career of it, right? Yeah, I, I, I really do think that, you know, we, the first class we had, we had over 50 people, which we were kind of surprised about. So um, now people have had their stimulus checks, or maybe <laughs> we made it quite inexpensive. It's just $99. You get a, for three hours, you get a, a certification, and you'll have en at least enough knowledge to use your transferable skills sure. uh, to get into the industry. And one of the things that we do is, you know, people come to us and, you know, we, we, we reformat and we, we, we calibrate their 
their resume. Because a lot of time people come in and you know, their resume is really not ready to go. That's one of the services that we offer, um, you know, is to re, you know, recalibrate, repurpose their resume to be more, um, you know, attractive to our clients. So uh, before we'll send out any resumes, all of the resumes have, are really reformatted, recalibrated, and made it to look a lot more attractive. And obviously, if they have a cannabis uh, certification, um, it's, it's important. Um, two recent placements that I had uh, last week, uh, our client was actually asking for that training. And we said, well, hey, maybe they don't have it, but would, would, what if they were willing to take it? And there were two remote sessions, and the client says, okay, we'll hire the people if they're willing to go through your training because there were remote sales positions, but he just thought he wanted them to have more knowledge. So it is something that we can sell to our clients to, hey, to say, hey, you know, they might not have the, the experience or now, but if we give them the training, will you hire them? And, and he said, yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we're, we're really able to help, uh, help in that respect. It's and that kind of leads into a, uh, something I want to talk about, kind of the, the bigger picture, which is, you know, is that a trend you're seeing? Um, kind of um, people maybe leaning into more to training right now or business owners maybe wanting to see more certifications or uh, anything else that you've noticed from kind of the um, businesses standpoint, um, given our, uh, our last couple of months? That's a fantastic question because what's happened now is, we're seeing states mandating training. Um, the first one of that was the state of Illinois. The state of Illinois has a responsible training vendor list where you have to, and, and Hemp Staff is one of the primary uh, training vendors where you had to submit an application and be vetted. And the, the great thing about us is we, uh, it's been two months now, we actually are an A-rated company through the Better Business Bureau. So we're quite proud of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Especially since, you know, they, they, it's very few companies. Um, you know, unfortunately, companies have turned their nose up to cannabis and, and hemp. But even though we don't actually touch the plant, right. um, it's taken us literally almost three years to even get recognized. And, um, you know, with them, you know, they normally ask for about five references. They made us do over 10. So we have always have to jump through extra loop, uh, hoops and loops to okay. get into. But since we are uh, 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 now uh, 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 a rated company, the Better Business Bureau, it was quite easy for us to apply and get approved to be uh, a responsible training vendor for the state of Illinois. Um, the state of Florida now is following suit, so we'll wait. Uh, we just got approved for that. Um, Missouri has, has also followed suit. Yep. And several states are following suit because they actually want, and they're mandating this. Yep. So what happens now with it, if you get a job at a, a dispensary, you do now within 90 days of your hire, you are now mandated in these particular states to go through a training, uh, approved training vendor like hemp staff yeah. to get the, the fundamental training that they feel is, is, is needed for individuals in these particular positions. So, yes, um, you're right. We're seeing that states are realizing that training is, 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 is missing. You know, training is missing. Um, you know, the, the, not just saying, oh, well, I, I've smoked it for 10 years. That's not enough. You need to have <laughs> right. a bit more uh, yeah. Or 20 years or decades and not enough they actually want actual uh, actual knowledge so, so you sound and, and are more confident when you're talking uh, to these particular clients who are coming in and really don't know what to have with the vape right. or they should they smoke they don't know what to do should yeah. they do edibles so we give that much needed training and then yes recently we're seeing clients saying hey you know, we either want someone who's who's gone through the training, or or will say that they're willing to do the training before we'll hire them. So it's 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 interesting to see the trend for me over 19 months, where it was really the training. You know, people did the training because they wanted to, and they realize now states mandating it that they yeah. that they have to do this training. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. I suspect it's, uh, that's just going this is just scratching the surface. Um, I would, I would highly suspect that that will be just more needed as we move forward. Um, not to mention the kind of, um, personalization that needs to occur when bud tenders are talking to, um, to patrons, you know, um, or just any staff member of uh, any company or have, certainly of a dispensary. It helps to have everybody knowing what the health and wellness benefits are, for instance, or, you know, um, if uh, the person is a seasoned, you know, um, 
uh, user of cannabis versus just starting out. You know, there are very much different um, strategies, different recommendations that you have to make. Um, and that's just scratching the surface. It's that's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting that you say that because it also each state has different mandates and different guidelines so we have to adjust our training per state right. so our training is it's not just a set training every single training has to be customized to the state that we're teaching in and that's why um, you know there, there there's this formal application process a formal reading of our actual curriculum making sure that it is um, adjusted to that particular state and then a, pro and a, pr a formal approval process for each of these states that are making it mandatory because every single state has different I mean maybe one day it'll be this utopia where each state is different so we all under the same laws but as you know in this industry every single state is completely different and has different rules and guidelines so that so we have to adjust our training for every single state and which is, as you, as you can, I'm sure you can understand, is a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of work for our, for our training. Yes. Yes, a lot of lifting there. And um, people that do our training, they get a great manual. They get a manual that they can look, and then they are required to take a test. They take a test at the training, and then they actually get a certification. So it's something that they can mention on their resume. Thank yeah. you. So anybody out there who's looking for jobs, uh, especially in the cannabis space, um, like Joan's saying, it might be a very, very good um, opportunity for you right now, especially if things are kind of um, slow, um, to actually knock out uh, whatever recommended, recommended um, certifications uh, or um, trainings that your state might provide or might require even uh, at this point um, if you're interested in getting into cannabis. Even if you're interested in getting into um, not a dispensary somewhere else, uh, it might be beneficial for you to take uh, such training. Um, that's one piece of advice I could think for people seeking jobs in cannabis right now. Do you have a few others, Joan, like tips that you could give folks that might be looking to get into the industry? Yeah. Well, you know, well, the, the training, I think, is the fundamental thing. You know, you need to have, if you're coming from a completely different industry, you'll need to have something cannabis-related or and at least you know cannabis or hemp related on your resume so if you can have to show that you, you're at least taking that initiative to go through the training and get yourself certified I think that will uh, uh, help to, to stumble into uh, one of the highest growth in, you know, growing industries in the US with no experience because as I said I came from a Healthcare and tech recruiting right. background. I, I've had over 15 years of recruiting experience, but no experience in, in, in and I had no knowledge. So I, I just got quite lucky. But now um, with companies looking for, you know, they, they look for transferable skills, but it would always strengthen your resume to have some type of training, uh, training and recognized training. And, um, you know, there's other uh, uh, trainers out there, but, you know, it, if you can say you're with a trainer that's certified by, you know, three states in America more pending and who is, you know, Better Business Bureau's A plus certified, that will uh, obviously strengthen uh, your application because you just haven't done some fly by night training. Training, you've done a training that, that, that states, you know, states in America think, you know, have thought enough to, to actually verify and, and, and move on with, yeah. But one thing I wanted to cover, it's so funny that you were talking about, yes, the, the trends are moving and things have slowed down, but it's funny, this is my best month ever. <laughs> the 19 months I've been with hemp staff, which is unbelievable for me. Um, you know, I actually had um, three people start on April 1st and another two people start on April 15th. So I've had five starts this month. My best before that was four. So it's kind of odd that, you know, in the middle of, of uh, you know, this, the, you know, I've had my best month ever. You know, kind of, I'm just giving an idea of the starts. Two starts last week were remote salespeople. You know, one was on the West Coast, one was on the East Coast for a large CBD company. So people are still hiring. And that was the company that said um, they weren't coming from a particular background. So they said if they're willing to take the training, they would hire them. And then on the first, I had two master growers start and also a compliance person. So, yeah. um, you know, people are hiring. You know, they, they are a little bit more cautious, but 
people are hiring. Right now I'm working on a, a large contract to get about 40 drivers uh, for a very large uh, dispensary that's nationwide. So mm -hmm. there's positions out there. It's just, it's just uh, you know, it's not as busy. You know, I, I, I had about 15 openings that were put on hold. So, you know, when we stop one thing, we just look into another. You've got to, you know, keep it moving. So, uh, but I'm, I'm happy to report I've had my best month ever this month. <laughs> well, that is good news, absolutely. And it also, like you're saying, speaks to kind of the bigger picture. Um, you know, yes, things are shifting around crazy. This has affected many, many, many people. And we certainly feel for them. Uh, and we send our best and we want to encourage all of them to, you know, keep your head up and move forward. Um, best way to move forward is to be proactive and to basically, you know, get up and move forward and try to get uh, where you're going uh, in the fastest way possible, um, but in the efficient way possible, um, and maybe even with some guidance, you know. And so um, if you need to, if you're in that situation, you might look to a place like Hempstaff. Um, they can help you. You know, certainly, I would guess, Joan, a big part of your job is not just placing people and getting contracts with employers to, to do it. It's actually counseling and being there for these clients, for your clients. Yes, I mean, our, one of our, our, job, our job, we have to work twofold. Obviously, we have to get the clients and everything else, but one is preparing our candidates. And, um, you know, it's a different type of interview process. You have to be able to do phone interviews. And a lot of people haven't done phone. We always do. We start with phone pre-screenings. And a phone interview is very different than an in-person interview. It's a different way, you know, we teach them, you know, if you get dressed and you sit upright and you smile, it does make you sound different on the phone. Yeah. Um, you know, we tell them, cheat, have your resume in front of you. If they don't know, cheat, you know, yeah. it, it makes you sound more confident other than they're trying to remember an um and arm, you know, you have the, your resume in front of you. So, you know, you're able to, you, you, you sound and you come across a lot more confident when you do that. So we do, you know, go through this with um, our individuals, you know, join early, don't just join. If you're, if you're interviews at noon, you can't, you cannot join at noon. You need to join at least 10 minutes early to make sure I'm on the phone with you. You sound good. How do you sound? A lot of times, you know, there's lots of noise. I can hear kids crying in the background. That's not going to work. Let's fix this. Let's move you to another room. So there's things that we have to do uh, with our candidates to get them ready. And then um, now, obviously, there's not too, we're not, really, not too many clients wanting to do in-person interviews. We're doing the Zoom yeah. interviews. And again, we have people join early and we groom them on the background, have you look, what to wear, and stuff like that. So yes, we do have to prepare in, in, in individuals. And then even before they get the interview, then, uh, as I said earlier, it's getting the resume ready. A lot of time, I mean, I've had resumes that look like dissertations coming in yeah. 10 pages, in 12 pages. You know, they're not looking for a dissertation. A resume should be one to two pages maximum. And you're only really required to go back 10 years in your employment. Because if you think of anything more than 10 years ago, it really doesn't exist anymore. Things yeah. have changed. Computers that we had years ago don't exist anymore. Yep. And, any skills you had are really antiquated. We really tell people, hey, 10 years is all you need to go back. And then obviously it helps with age discrimination because if you go back to the year dot, I can look on your resume and know how old you are. So, you know, you shouldn't, you know, that, you, know you don't want to perpetuate age discrimination. So, you know, we help them with that and stuff like that. So there's ways to help and assist people moving forward. That's yeah, a really good forward. point. So, Sorry, uh, that's a great question. Thank you. So I don't much. Tell you off. My pleasure, yeah. Joan. Um, and those are really, really great tips. <laughs> for, I know. Those are great tips for everybody to really focus on. And, you know, that's a, that's a good point. I, I don't think people like uh, know a lot about that 10-year thing. That makes a lot of sense in terms of yeah. age and, and making yourself look antiquated, even though you're trying to just be thorough. You know, that's an a, a easy mistake people can make, for it, sure. It's a very easy mistake. It's a yes. very easy mistake. Um, you know, I'm not the, the youngest chick on the block, so I know <laughs> all about that. So you can make yourself look uh, vital and, you know, with it just by following that 10-year rule. Um, you know, because I've seen resumes that go back to, you know, 1972. In 1972, there wasn't computers that we have now. There was no right. iPhones. No one cares what you did in 1972 because it it's not relevant. Right. In 1982, 
it's not relevant. You know, 10 years really is the maximum that anybody needs to go back in their resume to keep their, their experience and their skills relevant to what an, uh, a, a client or an employer is looking for. And that is like one of the biggest mistakes that anybody ever makes in their resume. Yep. Yeah. I think we've uncovered a nice little nugget there. That's very good. Um, you know, honestly, Joan, I think we could probably do a whole other show uh, just targeted on uh, helping job seekers with tips and things of that nature. So maybe we'll have to talk about doing that in the future. Um, do that. Do that too. There you go. Um, but it is about time to wrap up, unfortunately. Um, thank you so much for have, uh, being with me today. Um, like I said, uh, Joan is a great resource for you. Um, before we leave, Joan, let's make sure that everybody knows where to find you and him staff out there. Well, before I leave, I just want to talk a little bit about our affiliate program, our referrals yes. program. There is a third thing that, that, that we do, and if you're looking to make some extra cash, um, you know, we do pay between five hundred to a thousand dollars for each lead that, the, that lead for each hire that leads, um, you know, from from a lead that you give us. So it's a way to, to bring in some quick, quiet cash. Uh, if you want any more information about that, let me know because uh, we do have some affiliates that do very, very well from us. A couple of placements a month can bring in thousands of dollars. So to Contact um, Star first if you're looking a job seeker. First, go to our website, uh, Hemp Star, so H E M P, and then capital S T A F F, hempstaff.com. Uh, go on our resume, um, register, post your, your, your uh, go, post your resume on there, go on our website, post your resume so that we can um, you know, start to see, see what's available. We post our positions as they become available. So check out that every week. Um, best way to contact me is by email. I'm Joan, J-O-A-N at hempstar.com. You can contact me, but mostly uh, we always direct candidates to our website. And also on our website, you can sign up for our training. So you can go on there, see what trainings are coming up um, in your state and, uh, you know, any kind of questions that you have. Um, if you don't see one in your state, you can email us on it, what's going on and, and when it's coming. But uh, really that one-on-one to get into the cannabis field is, is something that I can recommend right now as really helping people get in. And going back to our success story with Joe, you can come in, do the training, and within five years be managing and coming back and being a trainer. I think that's a pretty great success story. It absolutely is, Joan. Thank you so much for being with me on Connecting Cannabis today. And as always, uh, if any of you uh, people are interested in cannabis, obviously, if you're looking for jobs, Hemp Staff's a great resource. Uh, if you're looking about knowledge or you're a business owner looking to grow your company via capital uh, or just knowledge, uh, go ahead and check out Razzle as well. Um, thank you, Joan, so much for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. I look forward to doing it again soon. Thank you. All right. It's a pleasure. Take care.